What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbridge Garage and today we'll be testing out the Predator 212 Ghost on our dyno. First we're going to go over the differences between the Ghost 212 and a standard Predator 212. Then we're going to fill it up with some oil and run it on our dyno to see what you can expect versus the stock 212. Now a few key differences between the Ghost and the stock 212 was the Ghost was designed for the racing cart world. Uh, the Predator 212 was designed for anything you wanted to use it for, basically a log splitter up to a go-kart. The biggest difference is this is 6,000 RPM governored out of the box by the coil. It's digitally governored, where the stock 212 Predator is mechanically governored at around 36 to 4,000 RPMs, depending on how you set up your throttle on it. So I will know if you do want to build this engine further, you're going to have to buy an additional coil to get rid of that 6,000 RPM limiter. But I would recommend to do a billet flywheel and a billet rod on this engine either way, whether you're replacing the, the coil or not, because I just do not trust the cast flywheels. The biggest reason for this is, is the magnet for the uh, coil pack is glued on and held on with a very crude uh, Phillips head screw. And I've seen them fly off and take off half the engine. So highly recommend running the billet flywheel on any of these engines past 4,000 RPMs. This is a Ducar style block. So this matches the Tillotson style blocks. It's out of basically the same factory. We don't know what the exact valve springs is in this engine, but I'm gonna assume it's around 18 to 26 pound valve springs. It does have a cast flywheel, it has a T6 aluminum rod in it that does not have insert bearings. So it's really close to the same rod you're gonna get in a 212 Predator engine. They're supposed to have a little bit different grind on the cam and it's supposed to have like a forged crankshaft and stuff. But a lot of this stuff can be found in your standard 212 Predator. The biggest difference between this is the 6,000 RPM governor and then they're giving you a round slide carb. Now the intake manifold we're running on this engine comes with the accessory kit from Harbor Freight. If you was to buy it, it's around another 200 bucks. This engine's gonna run you $300. A standard Predator without a coupon is 160. So you're basically gonna pay double for this engine. Um, I believe in my personal garage, we would go with the standard 212 because you have a non-governored coil. So you're not gonna have to replace that in the future if you wanna take the engine further. And you can get these carbs for pretty cheap online and you can get valve springs for $16 for a set. So really what you're getting is a pre-built engine right out of the box. We've been calling this on our channel, the lazy man's engine. And I don't mean that to offend anybody. A lot of people just do not want to open up these engines and take the governor out. They don't want to work on them because they don't know about engines and they don't care to learn. So this is the perfect engine for that person. There are a lot better options out there like the 225 Tilson. You can spend a little bit more money and get like a really high performing engine. But for the guy that don't want to mess with nothing, they just want to bolt something on, this is probably your best bet because it does come with a warranty and has a 6,000 RPM limit right out of the box. Other than that, it's your pretty standard engine. Uh, I, they didn't say anything on their website about doing anything different with the flywheel. When I look at it compared to a 212 Predator, it looks exactly the same. We've dressed this one up a little bit. We put a Mr. Valve Cover uh, billet valve cover we had made up and some billet cup washers and then we powder coated the heat shield on the head just to make it look nicer and uh, just make it stand out a little bit more. But other than that, it's completely bone stock. We are gonna check the valve lash. I highly recommend when you're getting one of these engines, the first thing you should do is check the valve lash. And I'm gonna set mine for around 3 thousandths uh, gap. And then we're gonna run Amsoil break-in oil in it first on the dyno. And we're not gonna get our numbers with this oil. We're gonna wait till we swap out to the Dominator racing oil. The reason you want to break in your engine is to make sure the piston rings are seated so you're not getting any kind of blow by you're getting the most compression you can have and you're just making sure your engine is going to last longer so we use 1030 amsoil break-in oil what we do is we run this for about 30 minutes at uh, 40 percent to 50 percent load we let the engine fully heat cycle one good time normally on my dyno i'll run a few soft pulls on the dyno with the break-in oil and then after about 20 to 25 minutes of runtime we drain it and we put in the dominator 1030 racing oil we found on our dyno you can actually open up a half a horsepower by switching from the break-in oil to dominator racing oil and i highly recommend using a premium oil in these engines because they only take a half a quart at the end of the day so one quart is going to go through two oil changes and it's not that big of an expense to have that assurance that you're using good oil and your engine's gonna last as long as possible. So we'll throw some oil in it. We gotta swap it out with our road to horsepower engine on the dyno, and let's get this thing warmed up and see what kind of numbers it'll make. I'm gonna guess right out of the box, it's gonna do 11 horsepower, 10 to 11. Uh, make your guesses in the comment section below now before the video goes on and let us know what you think it's gonna make. It's gonna be interesting to see what this engine will push out. We're gonna do some building on this engine to see what we can squeeze out of it. We've done a full build on the channel, but we basically just kept the block at the end of the day. So 
that technically wasn't a ghost build because we stripped down everything off of it. So we'll do a build step by step on this engine to see what you can expect in the real world. When checking your valve lash, you want to make sure that you're at top dead center. When you rotate the engine over, you'll see the intake valve open, then the exhaust valve will crack open a little bit, and if you keep rotating, you'll see the exhaust valve open all the way. This exhaust valve cracking open is a compression release. Make sure you do not set the valve lash when this is open. It will result in hard kickbacks during the pull starts. We want to run this engine just how it comes out of the box. We'll be installing the metal intake for our dyno testing. Alright, so we're ready to start this up. Normally, I start up with my uh, starting motor, but I didn't want to pull the flywheel nut and put that on. So, hopefully she pull starts easy because this has never been started before. We have oil in it. I went ahead and put a oil drain hose. Uh, you can find the links to these in the video description where when we do drain the braking oil, we don't make a mess on everything. Uh, we have a particular header we run and it has a wide band in it. Then we're taking the head temperature right at the spark plug. Then we also have our RPM gauge hooked up. What else? We got air intake temperature. The only thing I don't have hooked up is my oil uh, temperature sensor because I found that the head temperature is what I normally read. And also the exhaust temperature because it actually broke the first time I used it. It goes in the exhaust right here and it snapped right off. So I need to get a new one. And now that we have this brace on this header, we don't have a lot of shaking out of our header. So you shouldn't have to run in that problem again. So uh, we can see if we've got any blow by coming out this hose. This is hooked up with a check valve coming off the valve cover. So let's we'll see if she starts. So our numbers, our air fuel ratio looked really good for an out of the box carb. Pretty surprised, I thought it'd be lean or rich. Uh, so now we can change our oil out to the Dominator Racing Oil. 
and then we can do our real dyno pull. That was just what I go through with the break in and I cut a lot of it obviously so y'all don't sit there and watch it for a long time. So our engine peaked at around 205 degrees on our head, uh, which is what I see with most of these engines. That's where they normally run. Of course, if we did a bunch of 7,000 RPM pulls, then we would see some crazy heat. But uh, so we have a lot of heat built up in our engine. Now we can go ahead and change the oil out to that Dominator Racing Oil and see what kind of numbers it's making. I'm thinking around 11 horsepower. That's what I'm sticking to so far. And we'll see what it does. A few moments later. All right, so we got the Dominator Racing Oil in there. I'm gonna throw my headphones in and we're gonna do a pull. I imagine that exhaust pipe's gonna come off. I just used a silicone coupler. And let me tell you, it ain't working out. Uh, I'm gonna have to go buy a collector for an exhaust that goes from two and a half inch to three inch weld it onto the end of the flex pipe and clamp it on because this ain't working out. It's about to melt off, which makes it, I mean, come on, throw it. Everything good, we good, we good. We got the racing oil in there. I'm gonna do another live pull to get the temperature back up and then we'll do our main pull. Okay guys, so we pulled up both graphs. So our green and light blue is our horsepower and torque for our ghost engine. So you can see them there. And then our purple and our yellow is actually the horsepower and torque from where we tested the 24 millimeter flat slide carburetor on our road to horsepower engine. Now, if you guys remember our road to horsepower engine is a 212 Hemi Predator. So we can, Put these graphs side by side and compare them so we made our max horsepower at around around six or 5500 rpms with our road to horsepower engine we made our max horsepower at about 5000 49 to 5000 with our ghost engine so if we look at where we made our max power with our ghost we are still only at 9.9 .9 horsepower and at that same RPM, we're at 10.87 horsepower with our uh, our road to horsepower engine. So it has a billet flywheel, wheel, a 24 millimeter carb and heavier valve spring and no governor. And we're only a hair bit over the price of the Ghost and we're making quite a bit more power. Then if we look at torque, so our max torque we made on the Ghost was around 43, 4200 RPM. And you can see that was 11.61 where our torque is 11.20 on the uh, the engine with the Makuni. But if we move just a little bit further ahead, we can see that we're making over the amount of torque. So a good amount of horsepower, once we get up in the range where the Ghost made its top end horsepower, we're making, we're beating it with our road to horsepower engine. So this tells you that this, this engine isn't nothing crazy out of the box that you can achieve more than this with doing your own parts and putting a little bit better carburetor on it. Uh, so it was pretty cool to show these graphs side by side. You can see our air fuel ratios was about the same all through it, a uh, little bit higher 
with the uh, 24 millimeter carb. A little bit of tuning would have got that out, but they're both tuned about where I would want them, around the, the 12 and a half to, you know, right around 12 and a half range, which that's where you want for maximum performance. But I thought that was pretty cool to show you guys these graphs overlaid on each other. People have been asking about these graphs done like this, and it was just a cool way to show you. So guys, it was pretty cool to dyno the Ghost, and uh, I know a lot of people are going to say, why didn't we put a 24 millimeter Makuni on the Ghost? We was just testing the Ghost at its $300 price point, like you would pull it out of the box. We didn't add anything else other than our own header, because we have to have an exhaust to be able to run this engine. And just comparing it to our Road to Horsepower engine, we're beating it with the Road to Horsepower, even with the, the knockoff Makuni, the cheaper $40 carburetor, we was still outperforming this Ghost, and we're actually hurting our horsepower on the road to horsepower engine because of that billet flywheel having more advanced timing that we're not taking advantage of with the stock cam in the road to horsepower engine so that was the only thing we wanted to see we see a lot of people praising these engines and they're not a bad engine by no means we just call them the lazy man's performance engine because you can achieve better power by doing this stuff yourself on another engine at the same price point if we wouldn't have did the billet flywheel, which I still don't trust this flywheel that's in this engine, uh, we just ran it because I need to test it right out of the box. I wouldn't do a lot of dyno pulls with this engine uh, having this, uh, this flywheel like this. But uh, if you are interested in the Ghost, then we're not knocking you. As long as you're messing with these engines, there's always room to grow with any of these engines. I just always have said that it's better if you're racing in the car industry, then yes, this is the engine you want to go with because they're going to have a lot of classes just for this engine but if you can modify them your your money is better spent buying a either a tiltson block and starting with a tiltson block because it already has the heavier valve springs if you buy the the correct tiltson engine but uh, make sure to follow our series on the road to horsepower you get to see a bunch of parts individually installed and tested on this dyno it's a good way to show where your money's getting spent let us know what you think about this video we're going to be adding a lot more to our road to horsepower series with different engines and just crazier builds so make sure to tune in for that and a uh, big shout out to amzul uh, clovis lubricants has been supplying all the oil and he supplied the dyno to be able to do these uh, these videos so make sure to check out clovis lubricants in the video description Thank you guys for watching let us know what you think about the ghost so it made right under 10 horsepower and uh, we ran it actually two more times off camera and it was pretty stable on the numbers i mean we're talking about 0.1 uh difference in the run so this is a 10 horsepower engine so thank you guys so much for watching make sure to check out those links we love you and god bless